Okay, so a thing has arrived. Um, I'm going to do a, a, an unboxing. This is an Outbacker Firebox Eco stove. Um, hopefully it's uh, it's similar to a the type of stove you'd have at home, but just uh, slightly lighter weight and um, it's designed for tent, uh, tent camping, hot tent camping. So uh, with that in mind, let's uh, get on with it and unbox. Okay, so first impressions are that essentially it is quite well packaged from the outside. Um, it's about nearly 20 kilos in the box, so uh, I would expect that uh, it would have to be packaged solidly on the outside. I've seen quite a few of these where they've been, uh, people say that they're buying returns and damaged ones that have been damaged in transit, so... Um, it'll be interesting to see how this one is uh, is packaged. I noticed there was a bit of moving about when it was in the um, when it was in the outer box, and I was just moving it around. So I can see why this is now. Um, there's an inner box, which appears to be quite uh, quite decent thickness cardboard, and down the outside has the uh, the bag which is obviously going to come in handy when I'm carrying it or transporting it in the van of the car. So, excellent. Right, without much more ado, I'll get this out and then I'll start opening right, that. Well, we're one box in. Um, as I say, there's the original bag, or the bag, which is slightly extra, but I think probably a worthwhile uh, purchase. There's this piece of paper which is slipped underneath, um, just explaining about fitting the glass. Obviously, when everything heats up, you don't want to crack the glass, so quite important. And it's quite normal for stores not to, uh, to arrive without the glass fitted in them. Um, I'm kind of a bit... I've seen this, this uh, stove online, uh, and I'm kind of a bit unsure as to whether I'm going to modify it from the get-go to uh, take a bigger piece of glass, because um, the stove I've got at home uh, in my front room, is the glass is huge on it. So, um, yeah, I'm tempted to modify it. And also something else that I've kind of come to notice is that even though these are advertised on Amazon and various other places and listed as having a baffle, they do not have a baffle. Um, and I can show you what, th what that baffle looks like on a modern Clean Skies 2020 spec stove because um, I've got one in my front room. Um, and it does keep so much of the heating and slow the... Uh, Nice bit of uh, thin plywood there. I'm going to put the stove on that, I think, in a minute. So I've saved busting my table and uh, incurring the wrath of my uh, my lovely wife. So, presumably some sort of instruction manual and uh, packing thing to explain how it all works. But, uh, as I say, got a stove at, at, uh, in the front room. It's been burnt. I've burnt tons and tons and tons of wood so far in last year or so so uh, trust me i know how to light and maintain and use a stove a couple of bits of packing and then we're into the uh we're into the beast well first impressions are that uh it looks nicely blacked and yeah it's all right that's so, uh one to one and a half mil type uh, size steel, I think, by the look of it. I'll use that, I'll take that off and use that as a sort of handle to uh, get the thing out of the box. Wait one, and I'll come back to you once I've uh, lifted this uh, behemoth out of the box. Right, so it's out of the box, and uh, yeah, it's uh, nice that they've uh, included so much packaging. Um, shame that some of this, this sort of bubble wrappy stuff, uh, not quite as eco-friendly as I'd, I'd like, but uh, I'm sure I can. Uh, I'm sure I can sort of uh, worry about that some other time. Oh, that's uh, that looks jolly nice. I uh, just need a bit, probably tightening on that and a bit of uh, extra effort. Now you'll notice this one because it's the. Uh, the eco one with the uh, secondary burn it's got these kind of weird plates on the outside and the reason for that is is because you want to draw heat up from underneath and then 
heat it on the side of the stove and then inject the air at the top before it actually goes out of the, out of the, um, the pipe. And as other people have said, there is absolutely no baffle in that. So that's going to be uh, one of the, I think one of the first things that gets modified. So a baffle is essentially another plate inside, inside the stove here, which um, is going to slow that keep the heat in the firebox for a little longer and prevent it all from shooting up the chimney, making the chimney as hot as hell um, and uh, basically sending all your heat to the outside world. Um, as I say, I can show you what one of these things looks like on my stove, but essentially it's usually angled at some sort of angle. Even if it's only part, part of the way across, it's still going to be super effective at stopping the heat going out quite as quick. What I'll probably do is I'll probably make a removable one, one of those baffles because obviously you want to try and be able to get in and clean everything. Um, it's not quite so critical on one of these stoves because it's going to be split apart every time you use it. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad. The one I've got in my front room, obviously, you need to be able to remove the baffle to sweep the chimney, you know. Um, but uh, they don't really get so much uh, soot in the chimney at home because um, we're burning really dry wood and it gets... Uh, it gets fully burnt before it goes up the chimney. Um, quite nice uh, stainless looking pipes. Thin enough to be light, but not uh, not so thin that they uh, they crush and it looks as though they're uh, they looks as though they're rolled and uh, seam welded them. So hopefully a nice bit of kit but um, we get one of them out and have a look at it in a bit more detail in a minute okay so uh, I'll just remove all these so they're out of the way five six seven eight in total and the eighth one is the uh, the spark arrestor um, and uh, and the uh, the cap so the spark arrest is important because you don't want to be uh, spewing sparks out of the out of the uh, stove onto other people's tents. Uh, and then I've got to remember how this all goes in, otherwise um, I'll have a right old load of fun trying to get it back in when I'm uh, when I'm actually camping. So these are the the side trays which um, slot into these little um, these little receptacles here, um, and uh, yeah, they'll go on uh, they'll go on the sides. And they kind of act as uh, warmers. And uh, I was asked, I, I sort of uh, was showing my wife a video of this, and she went, "Yeah, they're for uh, drying pants and socks." So uh, that's what uh, these uh, these side trays are for, drying pants and socks. Which, uh, if you've ever been camping, you probably do spend a lot of time with uh, wet socks and stuff. Um, yeah, there's a the ashtray at the bottom. Which, um, to be honest, I don't find that we produce a lot of ash at home, so I wouldn't expect this thing to produce an awful lot. Cause we're probably using the same wood. Um, you've got this uh, weird, um, the weird uh, jubilee clip with a couple of uh, couple of rings on, which I think is really bizarre because I'd have put three on that, so you can at least, uh, you know, kind of attach them triangularly. Um, but we shall uh, we shall see as to uh, whether that actually is a a practical assumption um, once I uh, once I get this outside and have a go with it. Um, two's better than none, three's better than two because um, you can always uh, choose to not use them if you want to uh, just do, uh, just guy two of them off. And then there's a bit of uh, self-adhesive rope seal which I presume is for uh, around the uh, stove glass or somewhere like that. We'll have a look at the instructions in a minute for that. Um, these stoves, with them being outdoor stoves, typically don't tend to be that well sealed. Um, but you, you need to seal them where they're supposed to be sealed, otherwise it, the, the thing will just be pulling air in left, right and centre and it'll just be largely uncontrollable burn. What you want to be able to do is shut the thing down in the way you want to shut it down. So ideally you want uh, air going at, at, at the top when it's burning, because wood burns over the top and not from underneath. Um, a lot of people get mixed up with this and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, do this and do that and it's, it don't work, you know. Um, yes, if your wood's wet and it's burning a little crappy, yes, I would open that, I would absolutely open it because you need to open it to, 
to make the wood burn. Just uh, effectively, it's like um, it's like just constantly blowing on the wood all the time. But you, what you find is is that the um, the flames are not as good, and uh, you're not getting as efficient. Uh, not not getting as efficient to burn. So uh, yeah, anyway, not to worry. Um, I'll uh, I'll explain a bit more about that when I'm doing a test of it. Um, and then this bit here looks quite. This is actually just. It's a, such a tiny cutout. You think, oh well, that's probably not doing anything. But that's your uh, that's your air wash. <laughs> and without that, you would uh, you would probably find that the um, the stove glass would get to. Uh, dirty really super fast so uh seems like nothing but um is uh is very very worthwhile i was actually trying to work out how i was going to provide that air wash um but um it's obviously built in um it's uh it's quite a nicely thought out stove by the look of it um hopefully it'll be really good in use what uh what i was saying before about enlarging the glass um i'm not entirely sure i'd need to i mean i could probably Get an extra sort of centimetre or so or you know maybe maybe a little more but um yeah it's, it's plenty it's not bad that's a good size glass that i think for a stove this size um and you know you don't really need any glass at all um you know you've got to bear in mind that this is all about burning wood this becomes really hot and uh, you know your tank gets nice and hot however the uh you know never underestimate the emotional advantage of uh, seeing them flames because uh, I, I, I was saying to my wife earlier on I can literally sit at home and switch the telly off and just watch the uh, watch the flames all night I just think it's just beautiful um, and uh, I think when you're in a tent and it's cold outside and all that the psychological effect is uh, is going to be uh, it's going to be quite something so anyway um, I'll come back in a short moment. I'll unpack all this because you're not probably interested in seeing any of that. Um, and I'll unpack the side bits, and I'll get it. Uh, I'll get it so so at least you can see what the uh, stove looks like when it's built up. Okay, so uh, just uh, looking at fitting this um, this stove glass. You've got these four bolts, and uh, I was kind of worried about how sort of robust these would be. Um, because they look like just bits of bent aluminium, but um, they look quite nice. Um, they're quite thin steel by the look of it. They've obviously been kind of stamped out or laser cut or something like that. But they're quite thin. They got a little bend in them, a little bit of a profile there, and um, there are some instructions about being careful about how you actually tighten everything up. So I'll just tighten it up gently and. Uh, fit the stove glass. The stove glass is typical kind of pyrolytic glass, um, a high temperature um, sort of Pyrex type stuff. And obviously we uh, we don't want to be busting that because uh, it's not cheap to replace. I mean, it's not vastly expensive, but it's uh, more expensive than zero. So uh, obviously I don't want to break it. Um, certainly don't want to be replacing it regularly or anything because, uh, you know, it all adds to total cost of ownership, doesn't it? So um, I'll just be uh, being very careful with that. So this is pretty much a full kind of packing list of what's in the box. Obviously, you didn't get the uh, Gerby knife or the uh, Barco uh, adjustable uh, pliers, but essentially this is pretty much the, uh, the whole stove. You notice there's three different pipes here in total. Three, oh, sorry, no, there's seven, but three of them are, there's three different types. So there's this one with the uh, the end cap and spark arrestor, and that's really weird because that'll catch water. So it's, uh, I'm not sure why they didn't uh, dome it the other way out, uh, or, you know, dome it outwards, because that would have made a lot more sense. But um, hey-ho, um, you've got this one that's double-ended, and from watching other uh, bits and bobs, I believe that the double-ended one goes on this there first then you get um these which are the typical extension one which so you've got the thin end fits into the other end of the double ended bit and then you've got a receiver for that and then obviously the 
Spiker S2 on will be fitted at the top as a final one. So um, if I just put two on, you can uh, kind of see how that looks. That's uh, reasonably good. And uh, yeah, happy days. It's decent. Um, we'll see how that is in practice. I mean, obviously, you, you're never going to get a completely gas tight seal on these, but um, they, should be, uh, they should be okay in practice. Um, and uh, yeah, let's put these side bits on, and then at least you get a vague idea of what the uh, the thing looks like when these are fitted. So uh, they do look uh, quite solid. I won't sit on it, but uh, I can imagine putting a a decent pan on it once it's come off the uh, off the grill, or uh, as my wife said, pair of pants. Um, I'm not sure how uh, how close you'd want these things to the uh, roaring fire. This thing will be at least a couple of hundred degrees C when it's running. I think it's uh, probably more likely I'd use it as a pan rest or something to put my, uh, my coffee pot on or something like that. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll fit the glass and then give you one final look um, and then you get to uh, at least see what the thing looks like when it's finished. OK, so I've got the glass fitted. Um, basically, that wire... Uh, or the not the wire rope, the... Um, the fire rope was uh, essentially for putting on the outs, uh, putting around the glass. I wasn't sure whether it was supposed to go around the glass or whether it's supposed to go around this bit or whatever it was, but it goes around here. These clips, it seems to fit okay. Um, these clips obviously are kind of now at a slight angle, which makes it hard to tighten up the um, the you know the hexagonal bit of the nut. So you're kind of pushing it down and sort of giving it a tighten. Where I think they've missed a trick here was, I've seen other ones, I don't know if it was this make or a different one, I can't remember now, but they've got like a little um, welded blip there that um, just sits there and holds the glass. And I'm also not entirely sure whether I actually like this four clips effort. Um, I'm very tempted to just um, just uh, lob something in the uh, in the mill and make a decent surround for this to go inside just um just you know sort of uh, fit it out what i would like to have liked to have seen as well is a removable door and i find that really annoying that they've sort of set it up in such a way that you can't actually take the door off i'm sure that's really cool because you know um then the door doesn't fall off while it's in the bag but um i would have liked to have been able to take this door off completely and it's not bolted on or anything, it's like actually welded on. Um, but I'd like to have been able to take that off and then just stick that in the in the milling machine and just uh, take you know take a little bit of a bit of a sort of um uh, thing off it to uh, increase the size of the the actual um the actual window. If you know if the glass ever goes, I've I'm I've got a, a few options, haven't I, about whether, what type of glass I fit then. But um it just kind of makes it a little bit harder to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll still be able to do it, but it just probably make it a little bit harder. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, there's potentially an option for making this bit bigger as well. But, um, you know, I suppose they've done it in a certain way from an engineering perspective, but also from a point of view where you don't want to be um, having smoke coming out of it. So we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'll do another video of it being burned uh, or first burn. As, uh, as people sometimes do. Um, one thing to be really careful of when you're doing the first burn on a stove, it's not quite so bad on a, a steel stove, but um, uh, obviously there's all sorts of stresses in these things. Um, it's worse on cast iron stoves because you can get cracking, um, but it, they always advise a really small fire um, and just kind of maintain it at that small size. And obviously people get a bit carried away when they've never had a stove before and you sort of look and it's just completely rip roaring. So if you are going to do that, just be careful. Okay, so this is a final shot, just back in the bag, um, which I think I had to buy, buy extra. I don't know, I, I picked the bag option anyway. It's got this little weird nodge on it for uh, for the, the stove pipe to sort of uh, protrude out of. Uh, one thing I do find a bit weird is uh, obviously this uh, this stove handle, the opening handle, it's a bit of a sitting duck. I've seen other ones that uh, people have said have arrived really scratched. 
and the front of the stove's been scratched to hell because this thing's been going round and round in the uh, the bag of the box or wherever it is. So I might have to just uh, strip that down and uh, put a spacer in so it doesn't scratch against the front of the stove if it goes round. But uh, some addition of a bit of a stainless washer or something like that. I'm sure that'll uh, save a lot of pain later on. One thing to note, I, uh, I did this the right way by accident, not on purpose, but uh, just make sure you've uh, got the bag the right way around when you're putting the stove in it, because <laughs> otherwise you're going to have to take it out and turn it round again, but uh, essentially that's for the, uh, the, the stop stove pipe to protrude out of. Anyway, thanks for watching. As I say, uh, original, back, uh, original Outbacker stoves, Outbacker big window firebox stove eco. Thank you for watching and I hope you gain some uh, benefits out of, uh, of seeing this, uh, this video. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, write it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, I, I've got to say I've got a stove in the house. I've got a stove now for the tent. Um, I love me wood burning and everything. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer questions about the stove and all that other stuff. So uh, speak to you soon. Bye for now.